Hello, my dear friends. How is it going? I hope I find you all in good health and safe and sound. I'm Ari Thurger, and today the video will be a little bit different, sharing you do something personal which doesn't happen very often. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the meaning of my tattoos. Not all of them, not all of my tattoos, of course. I've picked three different tattoos and I'm going to share with you their meanings. <laughs> I'm doing this video because surprisingly, or perhaps not that surprising, for the past five years since I've created a YouTube channel, there's been a lot of questions concerning my tattoos and what they mean and my scars as well. It's, it's only natural that people are curious and want to know more about symbols, iconography and, and the meaning of images. But I'm also doing this video, to be honest, because it's getting hard to create content for YouTube and at the same time having three different jobs apart from YouTube. And uh, I don't want to stop the activity in this channel as YouTube has been quite the interesting project for me at least and it helps to cope with several life's problems. So I want to keep active here so I've decided to submit to you and answer your questions concerning my tattoos. Uh, just three of them as I said for now and uh, that should be more than enough to satisfy those who are curious about my tattoos, I think. <laughs> and yes, good question, how many tattoos do I have? Uh, well, I, I should have counted them before starting this video. It's surely no more than 15. Uh, certainly no more than 20. Sometimes I forget about some of my tattoos, uh, as some are not in parts of my body I can immediately perceive. Just the other day, as an example, I was washing my hands and for a split second I thought, oh no, I, I've lost my tattoo, and then, oh right, uh, it's on the other wrist. Sometimes this happens. Uh, anyway, enough talk, uh, let's delve into this, my dear friends, and I hope you enjoy it and maybe may it be entertaining at the very least, please. So the first tattoo I have chosen is the one uh, uh, many of you have cocked a glimpse of under my sleeve. <laughs> uh, it's a sequence of four runes, uh, it's not a word, uh, wasn't constructed to mean any particular term, word or sentence, but rather a sequence of four runes to remind me of something when times get tough. It's quite simple really. There are four runes, uh, Hurus, um, Thiwas, uh, Unio and Argis. In general terms and within the meaning I wanted to give to this tattoo, Hurus is the rune of strength, wisdom and male power, the male figure as if it were a rune that represents man and his essence basically starting off with a representation of the self and an expression of my self-identification as a man who looks for strength and wisdom, strength of mind and spirit to govern my own mind. And then comes Thiwas, which represents honor, uh, justice and success, but with sacrifice. You don't get anywhere without sacrificing something as if it were an offering to your own life and to the perceptions of the supernatural environment beyond the self. You give something and you get something in return. Everything in life is sacrificed if we want to win and stand firm. Uh, there are many things I had to sacrifice in life. We all have things we love the, that must be sacrificed. Uh, some more than others, of course, but life isn't without sacrifice. Self-sacrifice is something that always leaves a mark. So it's important to remember uh, that we should not be consumed by the more negative or, or perhaps the more brutal and violent impulses, which are the responses to the feelings of loss, and uh, try to maintain our mind as clear as possible to never lose the sense of fairness. Because uh, in our struggles, sometimes we end up causing injustice and uh, our actions may cause harm to others, and so others will suffer from the exact same things we have been victims of. And when that happens, we completely lose any morals when we condemn people to the same fate we have been forced to live. And it's just not right to blame others for the misfortunes we have suffered from, of which others have had no part in it whatsoever. The next rune is Unio. Uh, it represents comfort, happiness, glory and a spiritual reward 
which is the next step after trying to live a life of, with wisdom, honor, and sacrifice present in the previous runes. So it's the third and next stage of trying to apply um, mental process in real life and acquiring the rewards of our success and rejoice in the success of others. I genuinely, genuinely think there's indeed great joy to witness the success of others and to know that we have also been part of that success. We have played some role in that success. I don't think there's a better feeling than the, that to feel joy and, and to be able to spread that joy unto others and share that glorious feeling that makes life worth living. And the final rune is Algis, of course. It represents protection and the stage in life when a person becomes a kind of guardian of those who do not have the strength to fight for themselves. Some moments in my life forced me to find a, an inner strength to be able to take care of others. So it's, it's always an important step in life, which completely changes our perception of life. When we come face to face with the responsibility of taking care of others, not, the, not just those we love, right, but precisely the act of taking care of those we don't know, with whom we have no familiar connection with. And for that very reason, we find empathy and a respect for life in caring for and, and loving others, and loving complete strangers. It's easy to have love and concern and affection for those who are closest to us and with whom we create strong bonds precisely because we love them, but it's not that easy, I admit, to, to love and care for complete strangers. And that's really a challenge that changes our life a lot and changes our perception about life, the sacredness of life and respect for other living beings. It is also a rune with a strong connection to the divine. Therefore, it is the last rune that represents the last stage of life after having tried to lead a balanced life and according to some moral principles and a basic understanding of human decency. So basically, this tattoo, it's just a way of living in this world, a way of becoming a better man and ultimately becoming the true spirit of the warrior. Uh, that sense of wanting to protect and expand love beyond ourselves. And uh, when the time comes to depart, know that we have created some goodness in this world and we have contributed with something good which has helped others to thrive and to even survive and find joy in life. That is a feeling I really have a great appreciation for because... Um, there has been a, so much violence in my life and long periods of my life I could only feel that I was alive precisely through violence and um, it has come to a point that there's simply n no more joy in anything. So uh, finding the opposite of these feelings, knowing that one's self can also bring joy to others and create a smile on someone else's face is a kind of a feeling of rebirth, right? Realizing that there's more to life than just violence. Uh, I, ha I had this tattoo done at the age of 25. It was a moment in life of many changes and many personal rewards and gaining a lot of new knowledge after a lot of struggles. I, I never expected to reach 25, uh, that's the truth, a and I didn't plan to do it. However, I did reach that age, as you can see. Uh, I'm beyond that age now, which is quite curious. Uh, I, I had the luck to meet someone at the age of 21 who has completely revealed to me a, a world of kindness. There were a series of events, no, no point in getting into that. I've changed and I keep on changing and I don't want to forget the entire process, including what still hurts a lot and the violence, uh, the violent aspects of life. I want to evolve and become a better version of myself and not going back and lose what has been achieved so far in terms of personal evolution. Moving on to the next tattoo, which is the one on my chest. Turn off the lights, sexy music, here it goes. <laughs> I hope you can see it. Uh, this is by far the tattoo that people have shown uh, a lot more curiosity for. Uh, there were indeed a, a lot of questions about it and suppositions and a lot of, of general curiosity around it. I don't usually expose myself, as you know it, and most of my tattoos are covered by clothes. Many of my tattoos mark initiation rites, initiation and the completion of a process. Not all of them, of course, uh, but many do, and they are meant to stay hidden, <laughs> simply because I value my privacy. I'm not doing anything abnormal. <laughs> uh, 
but some of my tattoos stand out eventually and people get curious, which, which is a good thing. After all, curiosity is what leads us to seek knowledge in order to have a deeper understanding of things. If you spend your time asking questions, even if you think some of which are stupid, I think you are doing very well. Uh, <laughs> not asking questions is the real problem. Anyway, um, concerning my chest tattoo, uh, many people thought it was that symbol, uh, sometimes called Hel Runar, uh, but most commonly known as the, the weird rune, representing fate and the weaving of fate and intertwined branches of life. It isn't that, uh, but I get why people thought it was, and if you thought that, uh, you were, in a way, to a certain extent, quite close, because indeed this is a design I've presented to the artist, because I wanted to illustrate a type of fate. Uh, as you have noticed, um, and I'll put on the screen somewhere in here, this is a bind rune, a, a simple combination of runes. I like to keep it simple and I often advise that when creating a bind rune. No more than two or three runes, otherwise you end up creating something that doesn't really focus on what you want and the entire meaning is dispersed as well as its magical purposes. Um, the rune you see somewhere in here, uh, in, in the middle, is Hagal, the younger Futhark rune equivalent to Hagalas uh, from the elder Futhark. I often call Hagal uh, the rune of hell. This is not at all academic, mind you. Um, you see, it, it's the rune of hail, hailstones, and it symbolizes crisis and catastrophe, disruption, radical change, destructive elements of nature, the uncontrollable and unavoidable unpleasantness in life, regression and inevitably the acceptance of the unalterable. It's the destructive natural forces humanity is powerless to control, it's chaos and the primal forces of the cosmos which contain power beyond the human or mortal ability to harness it. Because we are only mortals and have great physical and psychological limitations in our corporeal existence as mortal beings and as children's, uh, children of the earth. Uh, Hagal is Hell in the sense of the underworld goddess who governs the realm of the dead, also called Hell. Hagal is Death. Death is inevitable, uncontrollable, the only thing absolutely certain that comes to all living beings. Death must exist to continue the cycle of existence, so there's nothing new in here. It's just a phase in the process of life. Uh, death happens to give way to new life because the decaying of all things nourishes the earth and new life sprouts from it. Death is not the end, merely a change of realities and a change in our world perception. Uh, we don't have to like it, we don't have to find beauty in it, we, we just have to respect it and understand its complexity and necessity in the cycle of nature. The sooner we accept the inevitable, the better our lives can be conducted and free from fear and the anguish of not being able to control that which cannot be controlled. The acceptance of death and the death of everything and everyone we care about and love is the sort of freedom we need to better enjoy the beauty and sacredness of life and to conduct our lives in order to feel alive. I'm not saying that we should deny ourselves the pleasant, the, the pleasures of, of life and the pleasantness in life, or deny joy and the company of others and the emotions that life has to bring. I'm not saying that we should deny the emotions that are provoked by death itself, especially the departing of those we care about. It's natural to feel sad and absolutely broken when we lose those we love the most. This is not a question of denying feelings and emotions provoked by death or, or, or even the fear of how death can be delivered to us. It's just a, the acceptance of death as it is, as a process of life. It is inevitable, just as the emotions brought by death are inevitable and we should not hide them or deny them because sadness, sorrow, despair, absolute wretchedness is as much part of life as all other emotions and, and makes us all human. And all sorts of emotions help us to construct a better understanding of life, I think. Uh, the thing is, um, I think we waste a lot of time trying to find a meaning for life. And when face to face with death, then we have an absolute crushing sense of emptiness that demonstrates how meaningless life can be. So, perhaps the approach um, 
should be different and not actually trying to find a meaning for life and even a personal meaning for our own existence because from the moment we are alive we already matter and that's it 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 isn't because we live a life in this way or that way that we will make our own existence relevant or meaningful and, and with purpose. Being alive, we already matter. You already matter. You, you are already valid for being you and existing and for being alive. So this somewhat goes against, but also in line with the previous tattoo, because while trying to lead a life uh, to create a valid purpose for being alive, we end up realizing through death that the fact that we are alive is already the most valid factor in each individual. Through death, we find the sacredness of life. This is just my perception, obviously. <laughs> uh, the other rune is Manhos, inverted. Uh, Manhos represents mankind, humankind. It represents mind and memory, the development of the intellect, rational mind, intelligence, the true essence of a person and what lives on. It's the, it's a, the psychic existence of the divine and in, in nature and life reflected in humankind. The part of the self in its raw spiritual state. That which makes us humans and rational beings. Uh, Manas is inverted uh, because it's the death of man. Uh, it, it's mortality, the death of humankind and all living things going down to hell to the underworld, to death, to another reality beyond this one after the death of the physical self. Manos in here is bound to Hagal. In other words, the human is bound to hell. No matter what are your beliefs, each and every one of us dies and is bound to hell. Hell here, the Old Norse conception of the realm of the dead, can be very much used in the metaphorical sense as well, obviously, as the inevitable journey we all must take, and no matter who we, who we surround ourselves with, the process of death is done alone. In death, we are lonely, perhaps even for the first time. No one can die for us, no one can make the journey for us, no one can accompany us. We are on our own in death, and that in itself is a rite of passage and facing the ultimate fear of being left alone. I'm sorry if my next few words may sound a little bit uh, pretentious uh, and arrogant even from my part. However, it seems to me that nowadays among pagans uh, there is a great fantastical delusion around the understanding of the afterlife. It's painted in such a childish, childish sorry, uh, perception that becomes disrespectful to life itself. Among heathens, uh, there is a great emphasis on Valhalla, uh, Valhalla, by the way, and Osgordr, uh, to the point that it seems there are no other possible realities for the soul or the spirit. Within heathenry, people are trying to find similarities or even substit substitutions uh, for the previous religious realities people were raised in. Valhalla, in modern understanding, almost becomes the equivalent of a paradise and where all heathens... Uh, must go after death to be at the side of the old father, the old father. This heathen understanding of, of the afterlife is Christianity and the world denying view in disguise. But it's, it's, just, it's not just among heathens, obviously. There's plenty of romanticism concerning death and the, the, the perceptions and wishes for the afterlife. I think this ends up creating a great focus on death and the afterlife and whimsical desires and even craving for the afterlife. And then this leads to a deep, a deep emptiness and longing for something that can only be achieved by abandoning life. And so respect and love for life is ultimately destroyed and that's exactly when we destroy ourselves. The romanticism of death is very dangerous in this aspect as it creates a a fervent need to escape from life and further on in life we end up regretting not having lived and enjoyed the time that was given to us. <laughs> anyway, concerning hell uh, as the Norse realm for the dead, uh, the surviving written sources are quite clear. Everyone goes to hell regardless of gender and social status. There's often these, these social constructions among human groups that create clear boundaries or separations between people 
either because of their gender identification or attribution of gender or because of their social class or status, their economic background, their political and the religious preferences, etc. And these human conceptions also create clear afterlives that can fit into those human conceptions, further separating people even in death, which I find absolutely ridiculous. So the conception of hell in Norse mythology is actually quite refreshing in certain points, as it is a place where all must go through or pass through according to the sources. Even if some people were going to Valhall or Sisrumnir or any other Norse afterlife place due to their social status in life, it is clear that all pass through hell first, eventually, and uh, that, that some stay in there and others move on. But everyone must go to hell. Poems such as Fofnismol, Solariol, uh, Saxo Grammaticos, Danish History, Gisla Sursun's Saga, Hegid's Saga, etc. All of them are accounts that give us the opposite understanding of hell when compared to other sources such as the Prose Edda, which portrays hell more like a reflection of the Christian idea of hell. So this is the meaning of the Bind Rune tattoo on my chest, uh, the fate of mortals uh, that must pass through death. Manos is inverted also precisely because it is the representation of humankind and going down the axis represented by the Hagal rune down into the underworld. A human upside down making its journey into the realm of the spirits. The idea here was also somewhat to resemble in part the iconographic representation of the rune of fate uh, here um, demonstrating the fate of all of us. And modesty aside, if you look closer, it also represents a stylized skull, which is pretty neat. <laughs> Finally, the other tattoo I have chosen is the one on my right shoulder. Uh, I'm not going to take my clothes off, uh, even though some of you would like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding, of course. Although, I have read some of your private messages at my Instagram. You kinky little devils. <laughs> uh, you, you have to take my word on this one. Although I think I have a photo at my Instagram precisely showing this particular tattoo. Uh, it is an Ouroboros, I'll put somewhere on the screen. A snake biting its own tail, forming a circle. This is a symbol of protection as you know it. So I took the liberty to place within an iconography I wanted to have represented as an important environment of order and wisdom and hope. In the middle you can see one of the symbolic representations of both the Roman goddess Vesta and the sacred fire of Vesta, the sacred fire at the, at the hearth in her temple. As you know, the, the priestesses of Vesta administered her temple and watched the, the eternal fire. The fire was constantly fed, it wasn't supposed to go out or Rome would come to an end. And it would be the end of civilization, order, wisdom, hope, and so the darkness of the chamber without the fire is this representation of chaos and uncertainty which leads to a failing in hoping for a brighter future for humankind. So the idea here is to keep the fire alive, keeping hope alive to maintain the warmth and protection and to maintain life itself. It's a beacon of light, of hope, the order and wisdom of humanity, the bright prospects of a rejuvenating and fruitful future. So I also wanted to add a um, triangle pointing upwards uh, as the symbol in alchemy that re represents fire, representing strong emotions such as passion, love, but also hate. So basically strong emotions and reinforcing the symbolism of fire as an element representative of human evolution but at the same time it also forms the temple where the sacred fire of Vesta is kept and it emanates light, wisdom and hope in life. However, as much as we try to protect what we have accomplished as a species and also as individuals and as much as we try to avoid change and chaos, it is inevitable and eventually everything is destroyed and falls into chaos in order to give way to new life, a rebirth, even to create the right conditions for new life to thrive and exist that wasn't originally within the, the structure that was planned uh, 
So mischief is necessary to give way to new improbable existences that otherwise would, not, would, would never be able to come forth and manifest themselves if the orderly structure wasn't broke down. Ruins is the fate of all empires. So it doesn't simply depend on us, right? Uh, <laughs> we very much forget that there are other forces beyond our human environment. The more sed sedentary uh, we are and uh, closed in in our own individual existence and the fervent need to survive within the human world and uh, at all costs, uh, keep the flame of hope alive and burning while at the same time struggling to remain sane and whole, uh, we forget about other forces beyond our own existence and beyond the human wishes and desires. There's a whole world of natural forces that by themselves serve as the element of chaos and mischief that will give way to new life and new possibilities and eventually there's a rupture and such elements and forces enter humanity's bubble and everything is turned upside down. Uh, my entire body is that element of change within the human world as all of us are elements of change and in constant evolution. So my whole body stays outside this protective circle represented by the snake or the serpent and the fires of hope and order are kept safe within for now. Until the destruction of my own body so that everything may be released and new life has the opportunity to thrive. No matter how much civilization tries to escape the great forces of nature, it will eventually be affected. But not everything is chaos and not everything is to be completely lost forever. The fires of Vesta, the fire within the temple, within the circle, also represents the wisdom of humanity, the memories and knowledge created and kept safe through time so that uh, it is worth maintaining under protection. And so the snake or the serpent serves as the element of protection of some elements that are necessary to keep humanity evolving towards better and brighter futures. The serpent helps protecting part of uh, what will inevitably be destroyed, so we won't lose our way and there's still hope left which we can hold on to and keep progressing. This is something I may speak about on some other video, uh, what I'm about to say next, concerning the myth of Thor fighting the world serpent, Jormungandr. Uh, it has been often dismissed and the, the symbology of the world serpent has been often wrongly portrayed as an element of evil and chaos, but it's, it's the exact opposite. Uh, the Midgard serpent is often depicted fighting Thor, and it's actually Thor that represents chaos in this particular account and these representations, both in literature but also visual art. Destroying the Midgard serpent from its protective shape, a circle or the serpent biting its own tail, uh, will bring about absolute chaos. In fact, the destruction of the Midgard serpent will bring about Ragnarok, the destruction of the gods and the old world. However, Thor, in, the account, in this account of trying to fish out the great serpent from the, the seas, is accompanied by a giant called Himmer, who cuts off uh, Thor's fishing line, symbolizing the restoration of balance and maintaining that natural balance, putting things back into their rightful place, thus postponing Ragnarok. Ragnarok is inevitable, it will happen, but there, will, there, there were several attempts to make it sooner, but it keeps being postponed. Uh, so Thor unknowingly almost brought Ragnarok and the destruction of all things by trying to destroy the Midgard serpent, who envelops the world and protects it against forces that try to destroy the world. Himmer, the giant, saved the day and balance was restored uh, to its rightful place. The world was saved from the violent impulses of Thor, who never measures the, the consequences of his actions. The same way we should re really think about our actions, not being impulsive, avoiding acting with a hot head, measuring our impulsive nature and being able to see past the moment right into the future, gather, gathering our wisdom and, and understand the impact our actions may have 
acting with responsibility, which isn't easy at times, surely, but more often than not, an impulsive behavior will generate more negative consequences than what seemed possible and may affect many others. Our own rage and hate may have terrible consequences uh, on many innocents. Uh, so the balance must be kept, uh, as many times it is the only thing that keeps our minds and our lives from falling into absolute darkness and chaos. All right, my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. I hope it was entertaining at the very least. Now you know uh, the general and basic meanings of at least three of my tattoos. Perhaps more meanings shall come in the future. Depends on your feedback, really and the history of some of my scars. <laughs> uh, not going to talk about my danger noodle uh, in here, uh, now a very hairy danger noodle as you can see, but perhaps this one uh, some of you have already guessed by some of my previous videos involving the symbology of the serpent in relation to the afterlife. Now, that's that. Once again, I do very much hope you have enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching, see you on the next video, and as always, talk for you Thanks for today. Obrigado por hoje. Farewell, my dear friends.